I know a lot of you that watch me will be like, big shocker. You don't like Cody Rhodes. I don't. I have good reasons for it. I'll never be a fan or supporter of his again. But to those that say that I just unnecessarily shit on him, fuck you. You know better. I've got a catalog of hate towards certain wrestlers going back over a decade on the interwebs that you can easily locate and find and you fucking gonna well know it. In no way, shape, or form could my distaste for Cody Rhodes measure up to certain individuals and you goddamn good and well know that. And you also know I've come on here and talked about how stupid this whole finish this story concept and bullshit is. In part because I've yet to have anybody tell me what's actually interesting or compelling about this fucking story. It's stupid. It's manufactured. It's fake and phony. Oh, ironically enough, it actually perfectly suits Cody Rhodes. The new John Cena, if you will. But, even beyond all that, like, what is even the fucking story anymore? Is Cody Rhodes taking on The Rock for the championship at WrestleMania? Hard to tell because it sure seems like that's where all the fucking focus is. I'll talk about The Rock and his presence and the good and bad that goes along with that in the, this week leading up to WrestleMania. But even this whole notion of finish the story at this point it gets beyond ridiculous because you're much more distracted by Cody and The Rock than you are Cody and Roman. And this whole notion that Cody has all this shit to overcome and all these obstacles is complete bullshit. Like, you throw that out the window the second he wins two straight Royal Rumbles. Come on now. But I want to take a different spin on this and just talk about how, how stupid this is. Because it fucking is. And that is this notion that Cody has to finish the story at WrestleMania. He has to close that chapter. He has to get it done. Wrestling at its best mirrors and imitates life. The world of the 80s, especially America, incredibly patriotic. Cold War was still running relatively strong. That's why... The Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov were such incredible heel characters. Sergeant Slaughter was both a great babyface and then he was a heel. You know, and he was fantastic there. Hulk Hogan obviously was the ultimate all-American babyface. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh! You know what I mean? These were guys that matched their time. And so many others too that I didn't even name. But then you get into the 90s and you've got Stone Cold Steve Austin taking on Vince McMahon. And everybody could get behind that because everybody hates a current former boss. They could live vicariously through Stone Cold Steve Austin and wanting to see Stone Cold fuck over and beat the shit out of his boss. Or you could watch The Rock and say, this guy was just so incredibly charismatic and fucking cool that if you built yourself in a lab and said, I wanted to be like this guy, you'd pretty much point to Dwayne The Rock Johnson and say, there you fucking go. Or if you were very big into the gangster rap scene in the 90s, you had fucking WCW and the goddamn NWO. That's what that was. That was gangster rap come to professional wrestling. That was gang warfare shit. DX to a certain degree too, right? Wrestling matches the times. Math wrestling is a reflection of reality. And as much as people might look at wrestling as an escape, from their mundane, horrendous realities at time, as do I sometimes, and I understand it. The simple reality is, is that wrestling may be life, but it needs to mirror life. And that is oftentimes people don't finish the story because life is not fair. Life fucking sucks a lot of times. It comes down to like four key things. This is what life's about. It's about love, loss, pain, and recovery. Because you think of love as happiness and feeling and sense of belonging, then you lose, 
then you feel that pain, and then how do you come back from that? All other bullshit aside, you could really, really compartmentalize life into those four categories. You are somewhere in those four categories in your life at some point in time or pursuing one of those four categories. You might say, well, I'm trying to pursue happiness. Well, there you go. I'm trying to pursue love. Well, there you go. There's your first bucket. But life is much more about loss and pain than it is love. And in particular, it's way more about recovery. And especially in America, we love to build heroes up, tear them the fuck down, and then build them up again at our choosing, in our way. So when I hear this notion of Cody Rhodes has to finish the story and he has to win, I say to myself, what part of fucking reality is this based on? Are we trying to make this some Avengers Endgame type of bullshit? This is not that. If you're trying to think of it from more of a sporting context, then there's absolutely nothing to back up that Cody Rhodes must finish the story at WrestleMania. In fact, there's overwhelming evidence that he should not if you use that as your logic. And you go all throughout the different sports. I go back to my Cubs in 2003. The Bartman game. The eight air, eight runs given up in the eighth inning in game six, and then they choke away the lead in game seven. And you're thinking, okay, they go into 2004, and now you're gonna have Pryor and Woody and Zambrano and Clement, and now they've added Greg Maddox into the mix, and they've both bolstered the bullpen a little bit. This is gonna be their fucking year. They're going to finish the story and finally end the curse of the goddamn blessed Billy Go. And of course, it didn't fucking happen, and it took another 12 years for the Cubs to win the World Series finally. If we went based off of the Cody Rhodes story arc, the Cubs would have had to win it all in 2004. Well, they fucking did it. Look at how many times Michael Jordan and the Bulls got bounced by the Pistons in the playoffs. It happened three straight years, 88, 89, 90. And then it finally got over the hump and swept their asses in 91. But it took four shots. This wasn't an era where you could just leave and go wherever the fuck you wanted to every year, like certain players. You had to stick with it but you had to battle. If life was fair and finishing the story was really a thing, then how come the Buffalo Bills lost four straight Super Bowls in the fucking nineties? How come the Sacramento Kings couldn't beat the Lakers in the two thousands? Right? It's actually more believable when you see a, a team, an individual, get really close and then it doesn't happen, like for years with Phil Mickelson, I'll go to tennis and I'll say Goran Ivanisevic and winning Wimbledon. That's a random fucking reference you weren't expecting, but it makes sense if you're familiar with it, right? Not everybody's going to go to Wimbledon and be fucking Pete Sampras or Roger goddamn Federer. This whole notion that Cody's got to win it now, to me is ridiculous. And in fact, it's not even that interesting or compelling of a story if he does, unless it is because of a massive change in character. Now, if you want to say that he is so consumed by finishing his story, he is so desperate to finish his story, that this is everything in his fucking life, and he aligns with The Rock, and this has all been a ruse, and he fucking turns, and he aligns, and Cody Rhodes is the corporate champion, like, all that shit fucking works. Why the hell people are cheering the freaking baby face with the suit. That's heel shit in wrestling. That's supposed to be heater shit. You're not supposed to like that. You're not supposed to cheer for that. You're not supposed to root for that by and large. So if you said Cody Rhodes' character was going to do that, now you've got my fucking attention. Now you've got my interest. Now you're actually trying to tell a story and finishing one story while beginning a whole new chapter and a very interesting and exciting chapter, it would be easily the best work of Cody Rhodes' career if they went down that path. Now, of course, they're not fucking going to because that would be good, and they're just determined to sit there and give all the whiny fucking Cody crybabies their moment. Whatever. I've resolved myself to that fact. But the whole notion of this, you've got to finish the story. Life ain't about that, man. And so often in life, that doesn't happen. The nice guy doesn't get the girl. The hardest working people often don't get the best and most out of their careers. 
It's about nepotism and connections and who you know and who you screw and who you do. That's what life's about. So not only is the Cody Rose babyface character kind of eh, the whole premise behind finishing his story is really dumb. They've distracted from the actual story to inject The Rock here because The Rock's got to be The Rock at this time. And now you've got a t- world title match that's going to main event night two that you're kind of like, eh. And you're already going to see these guys wrestle on night one. It's like, eh. Doesn't feel so WrestleMania XL to me. But again, if we're keeping this shit real 100, there's far more reason for thinking about wrestling as life here. And it is a reflection of a metaphor for life. There's way more argument to make for Cody Rhodes not winning that title next Sunday at WrestleMania than there is that he does. I'm sure it's going to happen. He's going to win and everybody's going to pretend like it's a great thing and then yada, 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 yada. But if we're thinking about this from a sports standpoint, you know, it's not like Cody has faced a tremendous amount of obstacles, especially in his return to WWE. There are guys that have to wait 15, 20 years to finally get that shot. Cody's been given tons of shots over the years because of who his fucking dad was, who his half-brother was, and don't pretend like he fucking hasn't. I mean, he's taken advantage of it, and a lot of people are too stupid to take advantage of it. He's at least taken advantage of it. I definitely give him credit there. He's put in the work. He's positioned himself well. But yeah. Like, if we're talking about finishing the story, then the Jazz should have beat the Bulls in 98. Guess what? They didn't. The Knicks should have been able to finish the story against the Bulls in the 90s. The only time they were kind of sort of able to do that was when the GOAT was away saving the universe from the basketball playing aliens called the Monstars. They had Sean Bradley's powers. We were doomed. And then when Mike came back in that 95-96 season, bye-bye, Spike, five games, kick your ass out of here. So often in life, you don't get to finish the story. How many people die in tragic matters? How many people suffer unexpected losses? I'm just saying. WWE is going to do what the fuck they want. They booked themselves into this corner. I feel no sympathy for them whatsoever. They deserve the chickens that come home to roost on this one. But for all those saying that Cody has to finish the story, now that you're going to use that type of argument, then he should have just won last year. They should have just got it the fuck over with. But in reality, no, he absolutely fucking does it. Ask 49ers fans about finishing the story in recent years. Woo. <laughs> you think they you think they have to, but they often don't. So miss me with all that bullshit. Cody does not have to finish his story at WrestleMania. His story's stupid. It's been distracted even away from what it originally was. They're going to do it. It's what the fuck ever at this point.